Hey calculus class, tonight we're going to learn topic 64, absolute convergence and the ratio and root test. So absolute and conditional convergence. If we are given some series and we don't know if a sub n is positive or negative, how can we be absolutely sure if the series converges? In order to be absolutely sure, we want to ignore any possible negative terms by looking at the absolute value of the series. So that means that if the absolute value of the series converges, then the series itself is absolutely convergent. Think about absolute convergence as a very strong type of convergence. <clears throat> so for example, if we were to look at <clears throat> this alternating series, we already know that this series is convergent because of the alternating series test. But does it converge absolutely? So that means I'm going to take the absolute value of this series. When I do that, the negative 1 basically does not matter. So therefore, I'm looking specifically at this P series. <clears throat> So since p is greater than 1, I know that the absolute value of this series converges. So therefore, I can say that this series converges absolutely. Now, if we were to look at this series, which is the alternating harmonic series, which we already know is convergent, but does it converge absolutely? So if I was to take the absolute value of the alternating harmonic series, I would just get the harmonic series. But we know that the harmonic series diverges. So therefore, no, the alternate, alternating uh, harmonic series does not converge absolutely. So when that happens, it's considered a fragile series. And a series is condi conditionally convergent if it converges but does not converge absolutely. So let's look at this example where we have cosine n over n cubed. All right, so <clears throat> even though there's not an obvious negative one in this series, we know that cosine itself oscillates between positive and negative one. So we don't know if this sequence is positive or negative. So that's why I'm going to use the um, absolute convergence. So when I take the absolute value of this sequence, we want to use the comparison test. So since cosine, and specifically the absolute value of it, is bounded above by one, we can say that the familiar series is one over n cubed because that will be the greater series. And we know that 1 over n cubed is going to converge because of a p-series. So therefore, when I look at the absolute value of cosine n over n cubed, that's going to be less than 1 over n cubed. So therefore, the absolute value of this series converges. So therefore, I can say that this series converges absolutely. All right, so this leads us into what's called the ratio test. And in order to get absolute convergence, we want the terms to be approaching zero really quickly. If you look at a term, and if the next term is a lot smaller, then you know it is shrinking quickly. You use the ratio test if a sub n contains factors such as n factorial or x to the n power. So the ratio test says that if you are given some series and you let the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the a sub n plus 1 term all over the a sub n term, then if the limit is less than 1, then the series converges absolutely. If the limit is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And if the limit equals 1, then the test is inconclusive and you have to do a different test. 
So let's look at some examples of the ratio test. So if we have the series of 2 to the n all over n to the fifth. So I'm going to use <clears throat> the, the ratio test. So I'm going to set it up so I have the n plus 1 term on top all over the nth term. And I'm going to take the absolute value of this. So before I do anything, I am going to simplify this huge fraction. So <clears throat> I go ahead and turn it into multiplication. And I can break up the 2 to the n plus 1 using exponent rules so that the 2 to the n's cancel. So I am now left with the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n, n to the fifth all over n plus 1 to the fifth. <clears throat> now I can go ahead and rewrite this. I can pull out this 2, and since this 2 will always be positive, it doesn't matter what the absolute value. So I'm going to bring it out in front. And then since each term left inside has a fifth power, I can use exponent rules to rewrite the limit as such. And if I was to plug it infinity as of right now, I would get infinity over infinity. So this tells me to use L'Hopital. When I L'Hopital, I will get 1 over 1, which just becomes 1. So therefore, the limit's 1 times 2 is 2. And since the limit is greater than 1, the series diverges by the ratio test. All right, now let's try this one with a factorial. Now with these ones, <clears throat> I'm going to rewrite it so I have the n plus 1 term over the nth term. And in order to simplify this, I will do what I did in the last one and change it into multiplication. But Notice that the n plus 1 factorial can be rewritten as n plus 1 times n factorial. So you're going to want to rewrite it like this so that the n factorials cancel, and then of course so do the 4 to the nth power. So now I'm left with something much nicer, 4 over n plus 1. When I plug in infinity, I'm going to get a constant over infinity, which gives me 0. And so since the limit is less than 1, the series converges by the ratio test. All right, let's try this example. I'm going to take the uh, n plus 1 term all over the nth term. Rewrite it so it's multiplication, so it looks better. <clears throat> And I can r get rid of the negative ones because I'm dealing with absolute value, so they're irrelevant. And I can rewrite the n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n factorial. And then I can break up um, this term using exponent rules. So I can cancel out the 1,000th to the n and the n factorials so that I am left with n plus 1 over 1,000, which is much nicer. When I plug in infinity, I'm going to get infinity. So since L is greater than 1, the series will diverge by the ratio test. All right, now we have what's called the root test. And this is similar to the ratio test, but you use this on series that have an nth root. So it says that if you're given some series and you let the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the sequence, then if the limit is less than 1, then the series converges, absolutely. If the limit is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And if the limit equals 1, then the test is inconclusive and you have to do another test. So if we were to look at some examples of the root test, here we have um, the series negative 1 to the n all over the natural log of n to the nth power. So <clears throat> I can go ahead and rewrite this um, as the absolute value of the sequence and take the nth root of it. So the nth powers and the nth roots cancel themselves out. 
So I'm left with the absolute value of negative one over the natural log of n. And of course, since I'm taking absolute value, the negative one is irrelevant. So I'm taking the limit as n approaches infinity of one all over the natural log of n. When I go ahead and put infinity in, I'm gonna get zero. And that means that since the limit is less than one, the series converges by the root test. For our next example, <clears throat> we're basically gonna do the exact same thing. So we have n, um, n powers, so I can take the absolute value of the sequence um, and take the nth root of it, and the nth root cancels out the nth power, so I'm left with absolute value of 4n minus 5 all over 2n plus 1. When I plug in infinity, I'm gonna get infinity over infinity. So I'm I go ahead and L'Hopital, and I get four over two, which reduces to two. And since the limit is greater than one, this series diverges by the root test. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about absolute convergence and the ratio and root tests. And I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.